Twitch.tv. We're here at Harrison Fieldhouse. I'm Joe Dean. Got Barry Stevenson here beside me and about to start a really good game against this uh, Lady Cardinals Verdigris basketball team. Yes, that'll be a great matchup tonight. We've got two good teams here. Uh, I think uh, this is a game that Lady Tigers and Coach London have had circled as a big-time matchup. Yeah, the Lady Cardinals 14-2 and two so far on the season, I want to say. This has 15-3, and three, so may maybe I'm wrong on that, but so far their losses have come to Victory Christian was one of them, which they beat our girls as well. Mm -hmm. And then Pryor was another one, which is a really good 5A basketball team as well. And then, of course, we, we were talking earlier about how they beat Vinola, Inola both times, one by two points, one by, I think, 15 points. Wow. So, uh, and then, of course, our girls beat Inola by two, but that was a close game as well. So this Lady Cardinals basketball team is a pretty competitive team, and they might give the Lady, Lady Tigers a run for their money tonight. I agree. I'm really excited to see uh, – I was speaking to Coach London earlier today, and he said they play the best man defense that we've seen all year is what we're about to see, that they will get up in us and guard us and length the court, and it'll be really aggressive. So That's good for the Lady Tigers because they have seen a lot of good defenses so far, but they've been kind of different schemes, and so getting that better man-to-man -man is going to provide a lot of good experience for the for the playoffs down the road. In the in the 04 Classic, the first I saw Steelwell play some of the best 2-3 defense I've seen been played on the Lady Tigers all year. I and then, then Tahlequah Sequoia, of course, uh, also has some excellent defense. They run different different schemes and such. Yes, uh, you know, Victory Christian, when they beat us earlier this year, intense man-to-man -man defense where they pressure at least half court, if not more, hard to get open on the wings. And be interesting to see. I know we've made some adjustments since then from early in the year, and uh, we'll see how they work for us tonight. Look for kind of Danielle Johnson to kind of use some of her length to provide a mismatch against that man-to-man. -man. We saw her against Steelwell run against a 2-3, which you know kind of clogs up the lane. She scored 22 points down there, which is which is just crazy against a, two, a really good 2-3 defense. So it'll be interesting to see if Danielle Johnson uh, really takes advantage of a mismatch tonight against a man-to-man -man defense and scores 22-plus, which could very well happen. I agree. And I think for the Lady Tigers to end up where they want this season to end in the state tournament, making a run at a gold ball, that they need her to bring nights like that. She it's is a difference maker. For sure. And it's it's important to note that, you know, she's not the only one on this team. You know, Zoe Whiteley won the MVP of that tournament, of the 04 Classic. Uh, and she scored 16 against Tahlequah Sequoia in the championship game and was a lights-out performer in that game. So, and you're going to see her. She's going to push the pace a lot this game. She's going to use a lot of her speed. Uh, she's going to get out in transition. Of course, her and Danielle both do that really well. They both get out in transition well. Yes. Danielle, it's absolutely amazing for her size that she runs the floor. I mean, it is a big advantage. She's going to outrun who's guarding her almost every time. Uh, I'm excited to see Bailey and Kenzie London. They've both been shooting it well lately. Uh, Kenzie last night, I think she started off four for four with three threes in the yeah. first quarter. Yeah. See if that hot hand carries over here on the home floor. Yeah, Kenzie led the team last night with points. She had 15, I want to say. So uh, it kind of shows, you know, there's a lot of different threats on this Lady Tigers team. You really, they're not one dimension at all. They can score in any way with any player, and you're going to see that a lot tonight. I agree. As we've progressed throughout the season, that's been a big area that we've improved is you don't know who to guard because yeah. we can all score. Yeah. Really quick here, they're praying at center court here, both teams. And you're going to see uh, some players kind of kind of take on different roles as the night goes on. I've seen Mallory Baker take on a number of different roles. She one of the best rebounders on the team, one of the best defenders on the team, and she does a lot of the little things for the Tigers that otherwise wouldn't be done. Yes, I love watching her energy. Her motor runs fast, and she is fun to watch. So we're going to go through the national anthem real quick.
Eagles taking on your for Gibson Lady Tigers. So we're about to present both teams' team starters very quickly. Let's meet their starters at junior, number three, Kylie McGuire. The Vertigris starters first. The first one, Kylie McGuire, 5'6", junior, junior. Number four, Kaylee Darden, 5'9", junior. Number 12, the senior, Callie Battenfield. With her, she's going to be a, a huge part of their team tonight. Absolutely. She's supposed to be a stud in every facet of the game. And then 21, Alyssa Ryan. And 25, Megan Turner are the other Vertigris starters tonight. So it looks like we're starting two seniors and three juniors. So plenty of experience out there for them. And now for your Fort Gibson Lady Tigers with a record of 18 wins. And the Lady Tigers starters right here. Let's meet your starters. At 5'7", a junior, number one, Zoe Whiteley. Zoe Whiteley, the junior, really fast, uh, plays with a lot of skill, ball four, handling, passing, Mallory shooting. Baker. Number four, Mallory Baker, huge effort player, brings a lot of energy to this team. Junior, number 20, Bailey London. Bailey London, a really good shooter from the perimeter, and he has a lot of length to clog some of those passing lanes. Absolutely. Number 32, Kinsey London. Kinsey London, we talked about her, scored 15 and last night. The senior, number 33, Danielle And then the 6'2 senior center, Danielle Johnson. Yeah, I'm really interested to see who matches up on Danielle because the uh, six footer there, Battenfield, they've got her listed as a guard. It be interesting to see if they go man and they put her on Danielle or if she's pressuring on the ball coming floor. Yeah. Just kind of looking at the eye test, she looks more of a uh, guard kind of build. You know, that be interested to see how she does tonight. And she will line up for the jump ball. I kind of noticed that already the length disparity between the two teams. I agree. Yeah, we, you know, that's something that we've brought with our starting lineup. Uh, like you said, Bailey London being six foot tall, long wingspan, and. You're missing Reese out with injury. You know, she's been out seven, eight games. And yeah. That's another person that's there at six foot. So when you have six two, six foot, six foot, and they can all move, you're not talking about a big slow team. We're talking about a long length that can still get around the basketball court. Yeah. It's been a change in Fort Gibson basketball over the last few years. You know, we've been fast, pressure, full court type defense more. We're, now we are a very solid half court defensive team. We can still pressure you into some turnovers because of our length. But we're not going to extend 90 feet and guard you length of the court very often. Yeah. Right now the Lady Tigers rolling in the man defense. Mm -hmm. A lot of ball movement here early for the Lady Cardinals. Off the mark three there by Alyssa Ryan. Looks like Alyssa Ryan is matching up on Danielle Johnson down low. That's the 5'10 senior. Zoe is able to turn the corner there and get the early nice and move. one. Great move. I'd like to see her get going early because as the confidence goes, it seems like she can just get it rolling whenever those nights where it starts going in. That's true. And I can tell you, I would not want to have to dribble the basketball with her guard. Her <laughs> defense is intense. Yeah. Yeah, we saw that last night against one of the better freshman players I've ever seen uh, for, for the um, – Bishop Kelly, Lady Comets. Yeah. Well, they were not a bad team. We, we played well last night. That was a big win. Using that high screen. Danielle rolling down. You know, Lady Tigers have put in a lot of screens, motion, and reading type uh, offense this season. A lot of times they like to run Baker kind of through that high post and kind of run the offense around her, but right now they've got Baker kind of down low right now. There she comes up on that screen looking for the angle of Danielle that wasn't there. Oh, man. Nice, nice move, move by Zoe Wiley. Can't get it to fall. Bailey London gets a chance at an open three. Can't hit that. And Danielle Johnson gets the offensive rebound. There's that link that you talked about. You know, she never left the floor, but – the Lady Cardinal just didn't stand a chance against Danielle. Yeah, if they give us that many offensive rebounds tonight, it will be a long night for them. Yeah. Oh, good move right there by number 25. She just wasn't able to finish the layup on that one. That was uh, Megan Turner, junior guard, 5'6". Danielle gets another look down low. It's going to kick it out to Zoe Whiteley. Really good ball movement right there. It wasn't a shot, but nice execution moving the ball around. 
Kenzie London setting up in that corner where she kind of hit those first four three-pointers last night. Me and uh, Danielle, I'm going to say she got held right there. Yeah. She, she wanted that call, but I, I agree. She had her pinned off. She got held from behind. Interesting to see how that goes, how physical they let the game get. Nice vision there by Kenzie London to intercept that pass. So far, the Lady Cardinals doing fairly well with that man-to-man -man defense. They don't leave a lot of room. There's that foul call that Danielle was looking for. I think what you talked about in the pregame of the uh, mismatch is there. The, they could go to Danielle a lot tonight. Already seven are out there. They're not getting bigger by Gardner, but they may have somebody no. that's got a little different, a little different defensive strategy. We'll see. Lexi Borgstadt is going to come in to guard Danielle Johnson. Coach London calling the play from the sideline. They get all set. Oh, nice driving dish right there. Just Man, that's a lot of well, – very physical right there to not be a foul call on that rebound. Mallory get hit pretty hard right there. And a good timeout call there by Coach London. So far, the Lady Cardinals playing with a lot of energy. and They, they, they run the floor pretty well so far. They might kind of give the Lady Tigers a competition speed-wise in the transition game. I agree. And, you know what? These officials are letting it be physical early. That's a little bit more of that playoff environment, which isn't a bad thing. You're playing a team that's playing a really intense man defense. If they let them get physical, you know, you're going to get hit on every pass and every yeah. screen, and that'll be good for us. That's what you'll see later in the season. And we talked about this last night, but it seems like this year they've kind of scheduled for the Lady Tigers some of the easier teams to start, and then you get into the middle and the later ends of this schedule, and you start to get some much better teams, uh, kind of the thick of the schedule. And I don't know, do they have they done that a lot in the past? I think just some years it happens that way and some years it doesn't, depending on what your conference is. But I agree, they've they've loaded the back end there. You think you had Sequoia, who's defending state champion, and you're going to turn around and see them here in just a week. Uh, Vanita also still in the schedule, who's a top eight team. Yeah. Going to the, you know. Oh, man, that's, that's pretty intense defense right there. They're going to get at least a jump ball, if not a turnover out of that. Lady Tigers are going to retain possession. You know, something that's easy to uh, forget is our Lady Tigers. Even though our defense doesn't look like this with a man, we don't give up a lot of points. That's that's true. You know, you, you got a point. That's Lady Tigers might have the best defense I've seen from any 4A girls team so far this year. Yeah, they are just very sound and that's always where they're supposed to be. And if they're using that side to clean the, clean the glass, it makes this tough. Yeah. Good hustle play there by Mallory Baker. Yeah, they, it seems like the defense only gets better throughout the game compared to some of these other teams that kind of get tired as the game goes on. But our, our Lady Tigers are not. That's not going to happen tonight. No. They're not going to get tired. Here we are showing good man defense. Nice pass in the middle. Nice look there from Kayla Darden. And like you talked about, it's a really defensive game so far. We're already halfway through the first quarter, and the score is 4-2. to two. Seems like uh, Verdiger's coach is a little more uh, liberal with his bench. You know, he subbed more. That number 12 that was supposed to be so great, she's already out. Get a breather. Yeah. Oh, nice play there by the Lady Tigers. Kenzie London read that same pass that she stole just about two minutes ago, right there to the right wing. Kenzie London drives and shoots and can't get it to hit. So, so far, I mean, Lady Verdigris, the Cardinals aren't, they're not giving us anything. No, it's going to be, uh, every basket's going to be earned tonight. I mean, Mallory Baker again with another hustle play right there on the floor. That's, yeah. you can't coach that. That's nice to have that kind of want to. But what I'm seeing so far from the Lady Tigers is they're really working inside, trying to get some of those points inside the lane. And it'll kind of be interesting to see if they can kind of lure the Lady Cardinals in inside the lane and then kind of kick it out and start hitting some of the threes they're so good at hitting. Absolutely agree. Yeah, we can definitely beat you from the inside or the outside, so if it opens it up. Good defense from the Lady Tigers right there. Everything challenged. She steps out of bounds, our basketball. Yeah. 
You know, she, there she is at half court waiting to pick her up. Yeah. Zoe Whiteley is a tough one to contain out there at the half line. Yeah, especially with, with the speed that she has. I, I just think maybe you kind of want to sit back, kind of let her come to you a little bit further because she will just roll right around her man with that speed that she has. She does it there. Yeah. It's a nice layup. Zoe Whiteley. Great move. I think Zoe's got, what, four points now? Yeah, she's got four. 14 with the long shot. Miss got her own rebound, but she walked right there, giving it back to the Lady Tigers. You know, something early that I'm seeing, it looks like Zoe can take whoever's guarding her. You know, she's got there three times, missed yeah. one, made two. Uh, one of them she got fouled on. She can blow right by this number 12 up here at the top. Battenfield is going to meet her again at center court. Shows you a little bit of her uh, abilities that she's six feet tall and out there guarding the fastest player we have on the court. That's true. She's Right now she's the tallest player on the floor for them. Mallory Baker gets her first foul there. And the Lady Tigers, they like to score. So far, kind of the trend I've seen is they score a lot of their points in the first and third quarters. Uh, we saw that last night in the third quarter. That's kind of when they drew away from Bishop Kelly. And then against some of these other weaker teams, they score almost all their points in the first quarter. It's, it's fun to watch, and they, they like getting out to those early leads. Absolutely. Great team. Oh, right there. The soft pass, Bailey London almost able to get the steal. Uh, you know, Lady Tigers, what, first sub will probably be Hannah Johnson or... Uh, Maybe Wofford. Wofford too, yeah. yeah. And this is about the time that he's been making that sub. Yeah. May save it to start the second quarter. Nobody in any foul trouble. I think Mallory's got one, and maybe Zoe has one. I can't remember who the other foul went to. Battenfield with the ball in her hands. You can tell that she's kind of a playmaker. Nice pass to number three. Open three there for Kylie McGuire. You know, I've always said whenever I've been announcing or doing anything around basketball, if a guy or girl wears number three or 33, <laughs> they think they're a shooter at least. <laughs> so you've got to at least have a hand up know where they are. They usually want to shoot that, one or the other. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, man, that's good defense right there. We were able to get the pass off, but they are all over us. Very physical early on here. Number three is right on Kenzie London right now. Not giving her any room. Oh, nice move right there. Mallory Baker with a great finish, but that's all created by Zoe Whiteley's penetration and dished her right in the middle, yeah. right in the middle of that lane where you were talking about they like to get it to her. Yeah, Zoe Whiteley's done a really good job so far of, of passing, of finding the open man, kind of breaking that defense down. Daniel Johnson's going to get called for that. They returned the favor. They got the ball in the middle of the paint on us right there. Yeah. Right flash down. Yeah. And it looks like we've got both both subs coming in here. Two we were discussing, Hannah Johnson and Wofford getting ready to check in. We mentioned this earlier, but Wofford kind of sealed the game for the Lady Tigers in the championship of the Old Fort Classic against Tahlequah, Tahlequah Sequoia. She hit two free throws that basically won the game. I mean, three seconds left, you're up by two. And they go up by four, and then it's over. Absolutely. I mean, we knew when the season started that she was a good player, but she has just blossomed as the season's gone. Shooting the ball well, you can't leave her open out there on the three-point line or she'll make you pay. Oh, yeah. And then she does everything else that you need her to. She had a huge cut at the end of that game uh, for a layup also. In that finals, that yeah, squally game. That. Uh, there's that man, D. You know, you... Burgers Lady Cardinals hanging around. Lady Tigers up one here, 10 to nine. That time Megan Turner there to get the rebound and the putback. And that's that defense leading the offense. Got to take care of the basketball. Got to be strong with it and be ready. Good rebound there from Mallory Baker. And that's going to end the first quarter. The court gets from Lady Tigers 10. The Verdigers Lady Cardinals 9. What a first quarter that was. Both teams playing really good defense so far. We haven't seen a lot of three-pointers taken. We saw the Lady Ver the Verdigris Lady Cardinals take one, I think, one three. Yes. And then our girls 
Well, Kenzie Lennon just shot one from the corner there. I think Bailey Lennon took one, too. Yeah, I think we've missed two. But with that man D that they're playing on, it's going to be hard to get that shot. You know, and like you said, unless we get it inside, wear them out with Danielle, Mallory, and Hannah now, then you can work back out whenever they're doubling down. And we mentioned, you know, we, we thought that Callie Battenfield was going to kind of be a huge player for the Lady Lady Cardinals now, but she didn't have any points so far. They've, they've kind of gone to the other players to score the ball, and it's, yeah. it's really been spread out. There hasn't really been any a go-to, so we'll see if, if that continues tonight. Yes. Yeah, so far, Kelly looked more like a kind of a playmaker. She plays good defense, cuts through the lane, but she's not showing you that she's going to take over the game and score a ton of points yet. be interesting yeah. to see how that goes over the next three quarters. Yeah. One thing we didn't, we didn't mention by Emma Wofford that she does really well is she really rebounds well for her size. You know, she's – let's see – what do we have her listed as here? I don't know. Well, you're looking for that. I mean, I, I will agree. And she gets her hands in the passing lane. She fits. RD is long, length. You know, we're going to get a hand on every pass. We rebound well. And size or not, she does yeah. a good job of getting in there and getting the basketball. Listed at 5'7". You know, our Lady Tigers are pretty big when you think – Kinsey is probably the shortest player on the floor in the starting lineup at 5'6". We, we have good size. Yeah. And Danielle Johnson making a quick return to the floor. You know, I don't know if you noticed this in the uh, Sequoia game in the finals, but breaking the press, Danielle was instrumental, getting into the middle of the floor about the half line, you know, using her size and length, turning and passing over the top. And I yeah. think same thing with this man D tonight. When somebody's all on you, it's nice to have Danielle to be like, boy, if I can find Danielle, I know we can pass it up there where only she can get it. Uh-huh. And last game, she didn't play a lot of the game, didn't play any of the second quarter, uh, sat out a lot of the second half as well. So she's getting to play a lot more. I wonder if maybe if she had, is not feeling well or something. We know the flu is going around right now. Absolutely. You know, there's plenty of sickness going around for Gibson right now. <laughs> uh, could be that. And it also could have been, you know, we had the lead looking ahead, thinking I'm going to need her. Tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe a little bit of both. You know, the uh, girls here have dodged the sickness bug so far better than the boys' team. The boys' yeah. team is seven boys out of the top 15 <laughs> are down with flu and will not be playing tonight. Only have eight suiting out. That is that is crazy. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that unless it was a tournament where you only took eight. Yeah. <laughs> here we are, a minute and a half into the second quarter, still 10 to 9. Both teams playing really aggressive D. And you can tell that long pass is what Vertigris is wanting. Uh, their coach wants a steal right there. I hate to say it, but in a game like this where it's this physical, what the officials call and don't call, it's going to matter when they play a defense. It's that kind of man D. That's true. That's true. So far, the Lady Cardinals have three fouls called on them in the first half, which is not a lot considering how physical they've been. I agree. You know, that was clearly a foul. Dustin made the right call right there. It was definitely a foul. Nice skip pass. Good close out on their part. See, there it was, Danielle. That's a catch that maybe nobody else makes, and instead yeah. the offense just keeps rolling. Yeah. Kenzie London's going to take a contested three off the mark there. Lady Cardinals with a chance to go up here. Off the mark three there by Turner. Big board by Danielle right there. That's big. You know, this time of year, you never know. Uh, this, this number 12 that we've heard so much about, Battenfield, she's subbed in and out three or four times. We never know. She could be fighting sickness tonight. That's true. You know, it That's is true. definitely going around green country area. <laughs> yeah, we kind of... Yeah. Expected a lot from one of the, the bigger boys on the Bishop Kelly team, Colin Morrison. He didn't really factor in as much as we thought he would. So there's definitely some uh, different players that are taking some of the larger roles here this week. Yes. Kenzie London with an open three from the corner. Can't hit it. Another great uh, drive and dish by Zoe. Zoe was able to beat her girl again. You know, she's helping us get good shots. Had some layups out of that. That is a matchup nightmare if you're – Whoever's guarding Zoe Wiley, they have a, their work cut out for them tonight. <laughs> yes, they do. She's kind of that energizer bunny. She just keeps going and going, never looks tired. 
Yeah, we, we mentioned that last night. I mean, in the fourth quarter, she is as fast as she is in the first quarter. There is no drop off. You know, those are the things that come from that off-season conditioning, from running track, working hard in the off-season. Yeah. And that's the difference. You know, when you have a team that's been in the state tournament 14 years in a row, it's not just the basketball season. We are working hard in the weight room and training in the off-season, so they're ready for, for the runs. Yeah. You know, you start looking at that state tournament, and we've played a couple tournaments that were this way where just like the uh, old Fort tournament, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, it's a lot different than spreading it out over a whole week. You play three games, three nights in a row, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to take its toll if you're not in shape. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we saw some of that in the boys' game last night. That's another thing about this schedule is not only are they playing some of these tougher teams, but they're going back-to-back, -back, you know, with the tournament and now, last night and tonight. Seems like they're, they're carrying a huge workload here in the middle of the season. Yes, I agree. A lot of time off the clock has been taken here, about two minutes. Danielle Johnson's going to go up and can't hit it. And I'll tell you, very big rebound again by Mallory Baker. Gosh, she's had her hands on five or six balls in there. Just yeah. got a yeah. jump ball or a rebound. They're collapsing on Danielle, leaving Mallory open for that offside rebound, and she's getting there. I don't know if you heard the uh, Tiger faithful thought that there was a foul early there in the possession. It's, <laughs> it's pretty physical. But I'm telling you, it's good for us because it happens in the playoffs. Not going to get any weak calls. You know, that might have been a foul a different night. Yeah, so far the Lady Tigers ranked number four in 4A. I think Klassen, Elgin, I can't remember, the, uh, and then Muldrow is the other one that are ranked ahead of them. Which is crazy, you know they have, they're, what are they seven? They're eighteen and one. Yeah, one that, loss to Victory Christian. That's a ranked team. And you're and you sit at number four with that. That's that's impressive considering how many good teams are in four A. Yeah, four A girls basketball is absolutely loaded. Uh, I think that may be Vertigris, uh Lady Cardinals first lead of the night there. You know, here we are. We're five minutes in the quarter and we haven't scored. Uh, reminds me a lot of that Victory Christian game, the finals, the Inola tournament. Man to man D that's really intense. It's hard for it's hard for anyone to handle, but it's just something that we we need to see more of. Yeah. And you know, not everybody can play man to man defense against us like this. Yeah. You know, you have true. to be really, really good defensive team. And really athletic as well, considering how athletic our girls are this year. Absolutely. How big and how fast. Open three there taken by Kylie McGuire. Can't get it to hit. Let's see, there's Danielle running out in front. They, they got back on it, but she was out in the lead at least. Kind of a little push off there by Danielle. Mm -hmm. Maybe getting a little bit frustrated with some, some of the physicality the Lady Cardinals are bringing tonight. Every pass is challenged. Every pass right there to the wing. There's nothing that's not challenged. Zoe Whiteley creating points for herself with the layup. Great move right there. Lady Tigers take back the lead. Only a couple minutes left here in the first half. Hey, you know, here we are. We're six minutes into this quarter, and it's two to two this quarter. Yeah. You know, a little lack of offense, but both teams playing really good defense. It's more defense than it is lack of scoring. Both teams are patient. You know, they're not taking bad shots. Battenfield takes a three there and hits it. I think that's our three first there. shot of the night probably for Battenfield. I, I, I think remember. you're right, yeah. I'd say no surprise from talking to the Lady Tiger coaching staff. They know she can score, but she's not just a one-on-one -on -one takeover. It's coming out of the offense kind of player. Yeah. Danielle Johnson fouled again. She's been fouled quite a few times tonight. She had a good post up in there deep right there. They're in the bonus now, so the next time they do get fouled, they will shoot the one and one. Kenzie London set to inbound the ball. She's done a very good job inbounding so far this season. I absolutely agree. This team is just, you know, we had some young parts earlier in the year, but they have all matured. There's not a single player out there that I don't feel good about having the ball in their hands. Yeah. And it's so easy to forget. You said, what, we're, we're what, 18 and one? 18-1, and, one, 18 yeah. and, one and And here we are with Reese Webb, who's a great player, been out for seven, eight games. Yeah, yeah. If she comes back at the right time, it'd be a 
it's hard and that'll be hard to play against for sure. Absolutely. You can tell the Lady Tigers trying hard to get the ball in there to Danielle. Nice drive there. Bailey London with the big rebound. So Lady Tigers down two, 50 seconds to go here before the half. Oh, nice pitch out for three. Bailey London with the corner three. With another assist by Zoe Whiteley. You know, that's at least two, maybe three assists that Zoe's had. Her drive has really helped us on the offensive end. If somebody's going to guard you that tight, you've got to be able to go by them. If you can, then it creates offense for everybody you're playing with. Yeah. Another three there, taken by Megan Turner. Let's see here, we're going to go for one shot. No, we're going to go ahead and attack. Good job right there by Zoe going to the line. And we saw that last game, Bailey London goes down with Zoe Wiley. Kind of almost, that time it was a two-on-two. -two. We saw a two-on-one in the same situation last night. And Bailey London just kind of creep out to the three-pointer and let that lane open up for Zoe Wiley because she knows the kind of speed that Zoe has. Yeah, you know, these girls have played together enough now that they've, they've all kind of, you know where they're going. You know, Bailey's going to probably fade out for that three-pointer. That's the shot she wants, and it's going to open things up. And if it doesn't, she's going to get hit for that three just like yeah. she did on the drive earlier. Wiley hits her second free throw there. She has eight so far tonight. So the Lady Cardinals looking to maybe have the last possession here and score the ball. Wanting to play straight up D here. Three seconds to go. She's not even looking to shoot it, so there you go. Lady Tigers will take that lead in the locker room. So really competitive first half so far with the Lady Cardinals and the Lady Tigers. 17 to 14 lead going to Fort Gibson, so expect to see a lot of competitive play here in the second half. This is Fort Gibson Tigers.tv, and we'll be back. Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare.
Fort Gibson's only locally and family-owned funeral home is committed to the community of Fort Gibson, Muskogee, and surrounding areas. It's our mission at Clifford D. Garrett Funeral Home to facilitate meaningful ways for families to grieve their loss and celebrate the memories of their loved ones. Call Cliff at 918-478-2555 or come visit 1224 East Poplar in Fort Gibson. This broadcast is brought to you by Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory, Keith's Hardware and Supply, Renfro Electric, Fort Gibson Education Foundation, Info Media, Dr. Debbie Coy, The Tiger's Den, Garrett Family Funeral Home, Fort Gibson State Bank, Fort Gibson Nursing Home, and Green Country Lanes and Muskogee Skate Center. Keith Hardware and Supply has been located in Fort Gibson, Oklahoma since 1957. We strive to find solutions to your fix and offer a multitude of quality products and services such as stilt chainsaws, Yeti coolers, Cub Cadet mowers, Johnsard mowers, case knives, and big green egg grills. In early 2015, Keith Hardware remodeled and added hundreds of new items to better serve their customers. At Keith's Hardware, we're proud supporters of all Fort Gibson School events. Go Tigers! Fort Gibson Education Foundation's desire is to help our students receive the best possible education our community can provide. We make every effort to be the highest quality educational system in the state. Donations equal opportunities, opportunities for students and teachers to be their best. An opportunity to build, design, and compete. An opportunity to create, design, and share. An opportunity to encourage, develop, and provide. An opportunity to travel, process, and gain real-world knowledge. An opportunity to honor, celebrate, and inspire. When you donate to our Fort Gibson Education Foundation, 100% of what you donate goes back into our classrooms for students and teachers so we can give them as many opportunities as possible. We are your Fort Gibson Education Foundation. Cornerstone Funeral Home and Crematory wish to personally invite you and your family to come tour the newest funeral home and the only crematory in Muskogee. Cornerstone welcomes the opportunity to answer any questions regarding planning and pre-arrangements for you and your loved ones. At Cornerstone, you'll find a helpful, professional staff and beautiful surroundings. Come experience the difference at Cornerstone Funeral Home, 1830 North York, Muskogee, where you will find faces you know and reputations you trust. Renfro Electric has been in business for over 35 years and is a full-service electrical contractor for all of Oklahoma. We are able to serve our customers with superior craftsmanship and top-notch service. With over 40 employees and a bonding capacity in excess of $6 million, we can handle those larger jobs but are still small enough to provide the personal service our customers have come to expect. For any electrical needs, give us a call at 918-687-7535. If you're looking for some local entertainment, look no further than Green Country Lanes located on South York Street in Muskogee, a prime place for open bowling, birthday parties, and glow bowling. Come on out to Green Country Lanes where bowling is a sport for those who have talent to spare. And we're back here on Fort Gibson Tigers TV. Uh, about to start the second half of this game against the Lady Vertigris Lady Cardinals, and so far the Lady Tigers has kind of uh, been in a really competitive game so far. The lead is 17 to 14, but the Lady Cardinals playing some really good man-to-man -man defense right now. Absolutely, there. I mean, that was toughest man-to-man -man defense that we've seen since the Victory Christian game in that Idaho tournament when we went down. And uh, here we are up three at the half. If I had to pick an MVP right now for the Lady Tigers so far, it would have to be Zoe Whiteley. Yeah. You can tell we're trying to get the ball inside of Danielle. They've fouled her probably four or five times down there uh, before she was able to shoot, and they are making it tough on us to get it to her and tough on her to catch and score. So Zoe may have to keep attacking a lot here in the second half. Yeah, Zoe with eight points so far tonight. Uh, expect her to break double digits. And, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the Lady Cardinals go out with a – Maybe a little bit of a different defense, maybe trying to trap Zoe a little bit more than, than what has been the case because she's just blown by her man every time. Maybe they try and double her in some instances, but that will be kind of difficult to do with that man-to-man -man defense. Mm -hmm. I think they'll stay in that man-to-man. -man. It will be interesting to see if maybe they sag off a little more. Uh, you know, I would not leave Bailey and Kenzie London open out there. But, no, yeah. But I do think, you know, we Bailey's made one. 
Kinsey hasn't hit any yet, so maybe you do sag off just another step so that you help over on Zoe and say, we're going to make Kinsey or Bailey hit two or three each, which I think we can do. But I think, you know, if I'm them, maybe I, I make that adjustment. Yeah. I don't want to watch Zoe Whiteley score another ten points or eight, whatever she had that half. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lady Tiger still in the locker room. I would say it's a pretty intense locker room right now <laughs> with a minute and a half left. You're still in there. Yeah. <laughs> Coach London uh, giving giving them a, a full talk before the half, for sure. Yes. <laughs> you know, I know they know how much time is left because part of this remodel, there is a clock in the locker room, so they know that there's one minute left before it goes. So Yeah. <laughs> nobody's got to remind them. Uh, I think it shows you a little bit, too, there in the tradition that Fort Gibson has. You know, we're up three against a good team. And instead of us being a pat on the back in the locker room, it's, uh, hey, ladies, we got to dig a little deeper. We're better than this. Yeah, yeah. Where, where Vertigris is out with three and a half, four minutes left, and they're probably just happy to be where they are within three points and thinking, man, that's a great first half for us. So Yeah, and that just speaks volumes to kind of the culture that this Lady Tigers team has had over the years. We, we, we mentioned earlier 14 straight state tournament appearances and several, several state championships. Yes. There, Back to back so far, or no, not back to right. back. State champions last year, runner-ups the year before, and then it goes back. Looks like they've won. Looks like they've won five state champ, four, four state champions, and, and three four runner up. or three runner-ups. Maybe one, two. No, you're right in that run. There's more runner-ups than I realized. Six runner-ups actually. Six wow. runner-ups and four state champions for the Lady Tigers. It's been an unbelievable run for the Lady Tigers. You think here, 2013 gold ball, 2014 gold ball, 2017 silver, and 2018 gold. With good teams there in the two years that. Oh, that yeah. Got. Lady Tigers have not been a team that people look forward to playing. No, no, for sure not. Had a long streak snapped last year losing a home game. Uh, I think that one we lost was in the tournament. It was the first home game we had lost in maybe in about 14 or 15 years. Wow. You know, unreal records that they've been able to put up. <laughs> Great kids, great players, great coaching staff. Uh, you got three great coaches down there right now, and of course uh, Jerry Walker did a great job with Lady Tigers for many yeah. years. Yeah. And we've mentioned this before, but but you know the way they do that, you know they play, a, they get out to these big leads, and then success just breeds more success when they are able to put some of their younger players in when they get those leads, you know, and they get a lot of those younger players a lot of playing time, so that they'll be ready as, when their time comes as upperclassmen. Yes. You know, uh, winning breeds winning. It's for sure. And then on the flip side of that, what you don't like to see is losing can be contagious too. You know, you make habits of what you do. So. Yeah. Danielle Johnson with a huge bucket there. And then I'm going to give credit there. A great dish by Zoe. Another assist, but Mallory Baker on the miss there saved that possession by getting another offensive rebound and kicking it back out to reset. Yeah. Mallory Baker's been huge on the offensive boards tonight. She may not be filling up a lot of points, but I would say she's probably given us six, seven possessions that we wouldn't have. Yeah, yeah. Danielle Johnson now has five tonight. You know, and also right there, something that kind of I missed there, the look up scoreboard, that's number 21 for Gergers. Uh, Alyssa Ryan, the senior that was guarding her, that's her third foul. So, wow. You know, that's... Garden Danielle, even though maybe she didn't score a ton in the first half, still takes a toll on your team. Yeah. And they have been guarding her very close so far tonight. Sometimes what we've thought is a little bit too close. <laughs> yes. The Lady Tigers back in that long athletic zone that we've talked about. Nice hands there by Bailey London. You know, Vertigris is really patient, and they've done a good job on offense and being patient. But our Lady Tigers have done a good job, and they've stayed at home in their defense. They're still in their assignments and their spots. So even though maybe that possession takes a minute, you know, we were still where we want to be. Yeah. Yeah, not, yeah now with a six-point lead, that's huge to start the third quarter. Mallory Baker with a physical jump ball there. Coach London not looking at the bench. He's uh, expecting her to stay in right here. <laughs> And, that, and Coach London has not gone to the bench a lot. He, he's gone. Hannah Johnson and Emma Wofford have come in. They come in in the second quarter some. But so far, he's kind of sticking with the main five for a large portion of this game so far. I agree. Uh, you know, as uh, later in the season you get, you usually shorten that bench up a little. Uh, I think 
the two we've seen, Hannah Johnson and uh, Emma Walford, will be there. And then Reese uh, Webb being the other one. I mean, yeah. Whether she's starting or coming off the bench, depending on how that ankle is, that's probably your top eight. And it probably won't get much past that top eight when it comes down, maybe first couple rounds. But when it gets to area state tournament, that's who you'll be seeing. Yeah, yeah. And that's eight good players. And it's easy to take that for granted because Lady Tigers have been so deep for so long. But you don't see a lot of teams that can play eight and not really give much up. There's so – you just get the feeling that there's so much you can take for granted with this team. I mean – it gets to a point from where as year to year, you kind of expect them almost to be in the championship. I mean, it's like, what other what other school can you say that of as far as basketball goes? At, at this point, it's the Lady Tigers. It's the Lady Tigers. What you're saying there is, I'm sitting up here looking at the uh, banners. 2011, 2012, 13, 14. You missed 15, 16, then back in the finals, 17 and 18. So that's six out of the last eight years they've been in the <laughs> In the finals. That is crazy. Oh, there's Danielle. That's uh, kind of like giving it to that running back in a football game. You just keep <laughs> pounding it in there, and sooner or later good things happen. And now we know she's got five points this half. What's that give her for the game tonight? Do you she know? has seven tonight. Seven, so, so she only had two in the first half and got five early here. Lady Tigers getting out to an eight-point lead now, almost halfway through the third quarter. And we kind of talked about that. They're, they come ready to they come ready to play in the third quarter for sure. Yes, they do. Defense is great. I don't I don't know if we're going to point this half. Uh, I think they were 14 there at the start the half and still are. Uh, yeah, they were. Yeah. So that's man, you got to feel good about that. And it, you know I, I keep talking about this as a victory Christian game that we lost because it's the only loss we have. So you go back to it. We played great defense that game. I, I think it was in the low 30s on the total. It was something like 29-31 or, I mean, in that ballpark. It would be interesting yeah. if you can find it to know what it was. But it was we just had a hard time scoring. And the points that we gave up in that game, a lot of them were steals for layups. It wasn't that we didn't play good defense. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and so our defense is tremendous. And, man, when it comes playoff time, that is a big, big deal. So here we are coming out of the timeout. Yeah, 30 to 26. 30 to 26. Was the loss to Victory Christian. Okay. You don't see a lot of teams uh, keep Fort Gibson to 26. You no. just don't see that. No, you don't. Here we are, Danielle in the high post. Been patient, looking for who's open. Zoe Whiteley running her defender all over half court. She got by her again, you know, they had to help over. That was that, was that help we kind of talked about. They helped off of Bailey just a step. Oh, that's a tough pass. It got there, though, deflected. You hear uh, Coach London yell patient. And both these teams, I mean, that's something you got to give both these teams credit for. They are patient. They're not just going to chunk a bad shot because they haven't shot in 10 seconds. Yeah. It's definitely find the open man. You know, you won't see a lot of bad shots taken. I agree. either of these teams. You know, I think both teams are going to feel like if we just execute our offense, sooner or later we're going to get a layup or an open jump shot, what we're looking for. That's not what you want to see is the turnover. If you're the Lady Cardinals, it's a, it's a break there. <laughs> yeah, they, they needed that. You know, and they're down eight, and then they go down here and get to the free throw line. Couple big free throws coming up. You know, when the team hasn't scored this half, and it's been so hard to get buckets. That's that's kind of how it is. You know, you see a couple go in, and then the more starts to flow through the through the bucket. Same thing. You know, the the defense led the offense for them too. They got that turnover and pushed quick, and that's how she got to the line. So we didn't get to set our defense up. Which which is vital, as you talked about how good our half court defense is on this Lady Tigers team. You're, you're going to need to score a lot of your points in transition to beat them. Nice offensive rebound and put back there from Lexi Borgstadt. Oh, and here they come. They haven't done this yet tonight. They're extending the pressure to the full court. Be interesting to see if they double. They're trying to double. You see number three coming around, but Zoe's already turned the corner. You'd like to get a good shot out of that double, but they've been recovered well defensively. Mallory Baker takes the jumper and hits it. Baker now with six tonight. Be really interested to see if Verdigris when they're back on D if they go in that full court or if they fall back after us getting a really good look out of that pressure. Yeah. Yeah, when you have Zoe Whiteley with that speed, she's going to bust that a, l a large portion of the time. Yes. If you don't have somebody that can keep her in front, then 
she's going to break the press. Yeah. And then the Lady Tigers are running downhill from there, just like this. Mm, kind of lost our spacing, but it's a good look. You can tell Danielle Wan is right there. She had her kind of sealed on the on the block, and they just weren't able to get it to her. They're still looking. Notice how far 25 sagging off of Kinsey there on that backside. Yeah, yeah. I wish that's what you're supposed to do in a good man D. Yeah. When you're not ball side, you're sagging down in the middle. Don't know how they came out of there with ball. Got a good look out of it, too. <laughs> Kylie McGuire. It's her second three of the night. They are uh, extending back that full court pressure. Jordan Chancellor doing a good job so far containing Zoe Whiteley there. If she can do that, they're gonna they're gonna roll with Chancellor defending Zoe Whiteley more as this game goes along. Yeah, if she can keep her in front, they're gonna see that. You know, here we are. Uh, I'm not saying that the officials haven't done a good job. They've done a real good job this half, but it's only the second foul and a tense man D when you're not reaching and slapping, but you play D like that. It's gonna, they're gonna get a few turnovers that way. Yeah. Battenfield now guarding Whiteley. Mm, tough floating pass. Hard to make a move off of a floating pass like that because it takes a long to get there. Definitely a foul. You know, if they're up in you, you got to attack them like that. We got Kinsey. Is it on the floor? Or is she shooting two? Going on the floor. That's the third foul for the Vertigris Lady Cardinals so far in this half. You know, this number three, uh, Kylie McGuire for the Verders Lady Cardinals, left-handed. She's hit a couple threes tonight, a couple free throws. She's been a big impact for a team that's only got 20 points. She scored at least eight, if not ten, of their points. So she's really good defense again. You got us calling timeout, having a hard time getting somebody open as who to make a pass to. Coach Lund's going to call a timeout with a little over a minute to go. In the third quarter, Lady Tigers holding on to a four-point lead. So far, the Lady Cardinals doing a good job of staying with them. You know, they, the Lady Tigers kind of got out to an early lead uh, in the, at the start of the third quarter, and now the, the momentum has kind of gone the other way here in the latter part. I agree. You can tell that the uh, Verdigris Lady Cardinals are – they kind of are smelling a little uh, blood in the water, as they say. You know, when they score, they're wanting to get up and press now. They're trying to get to the attack mode, see if they've got us worn down a little. Uh, you know, we look a little little frustrated there at times. Uh, Zoe Wiley and Danielle have looked a little frustrated with that really intense D. Uh, they've handled it well. I'm just saying, you know, you can tell it's starting to take a little bit of a toll. Here we are. And did have a nice win last night by 25, 30 points, but it is a back-to-back -back night for us. Yeah, yeah. There has to be some some level of fatigue going on for these girls. They've had two two week two weeks straight that have been very busy. Uh, yes, they do. Yeah, coming off of that tournament, it was three tough games on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hannah Johnson coming in for Danielle Johnson. And you can see Danielle. She's done a great job. She needs a break, though. You know, when you're playing hard and defense is that intense, she's. That's why he took her out here with these 53 seconds. See if he sets her very long in the fourth quarter. This may just be it or a short rest start of the fourth. Yeah. She had a great start to this third quarter, scoring five early, but then I think they kind of adjusted, and we haven't been able to get her the ball and score down there. Nice drive there. You know, and that's one. Danielle goes out, and instantly they're attacking the rim. Yeah. You know, she, she's a presence down low. But maybe kind of on offense and get a little bit more spacing, kind of run to the outside edges, and then maybe open up the lane inside. Kind of a small ball lineup. Good help by Mallory right there. Mallory Baker with a great job stepping over. Whiteley pushing the pace. See, I like right there how Zoe Whiteley kept her dribble. Uh, instead of just getting over that corner, she's been picking it up. She kept her dribble, was able to kind of attack again. Yeah. Got a decent look there for Emma Walker. It just didn't go in. So at the end of the third quarter, and still a one-possession ball game for the Lady Tigers. They're up 24-22, and and the, the Lady Cardinals, uh, the momentum is going their way right now, and they are playing really good basketball. Through three quarters, 24 points 
That is not a lot. That's not a lot of scoring for this Lady Tigers team. They usually, you will see 70 on a nightly basis, and mm -hmm. they're, they're just trying to work to get to 40 right now. Uh, 40 would be a good a good way to start. Yeah, we get to 40, I'd feel good about getting a win tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, every, every pass is challenged on the wing. I, I'm telling you, it's so reminiscent of that game that we lost a victory. Now, I, I think we look better. We, I like our chances of still winning this basketball game, but every single pass is challenged and hard. I mean, Zoe made a good pass to Emma Wofford right there to, to kind of end the quarter. Went off her hands, they get a steal and go down and score again. Almost every point seems like it comes off of a turnover or mistake. They're able to get that confidence yeah. and get running downhill on us. Yeah, and it's important to note that Zoe Wiley has had zero points in the third quarter. The Lady Cardinals doing a much better job there of, of kind of containing her, not letting her get past them. You, you know they absolutely made a conscious effort of we're not going to watch her get to the basket and she layups. Be yeah. interesting to see if they can stop her another quarter or if she can get there again. Yeah. Well, Mallory Baker, I don't know if she's hardly came out of this ball game and has played very, very hard for all three quarters so far. She's but looking at getting close to double-digit rebounds at this point. I agree. You know, our, our biggest fear is, as a team, I think the matchup that's tough is we're not getting those open three-point looks. And the ones we have had, we've only made, I think, one three-pointer tonight, which was Bailey London in the corner. You know, if we don't get any points from the outside, it makes us – a lot easier to guard because, you know, we'll, we'll sag off of Zoe and we'll make sure that Danielle can't get the layup. Yeah. Close okay. three attempt there from Lexi Borgstadt. And the Lady Cardinals are doing a really good job of getting back in transition against this Lady Tigers team. Really intense D. We get an over and back call. I'm not going to say they got that call right, but, man, pretty close to a foul. She jives through Kinsey London right there <laughs> to get the ball. Yeah. It was over and back first, though, I would say for sure. Here we are in kind of a 3-2 look. Uh, still have Danielle Johnson out getting a little break. Zoe working that free throw line. Great job right there. Got a steal for the Lady Tigers. Zoe would have liked to got to the attack, but had yeah. to kind of pull it up. And that's okay. You know, you have to set up the offense. And a nice, almost a nice backdoor look there from Zoe Wiley. She didn't get it, though. And it's a very physical game to only have four fouls called total this half. Emma Wofford gets the open three there and can't get it. Oh, Hannah Johnson did a great job battling to get a chance to tip that ball, but since she tipped it out, she didn't have anybody to go to. Hannah Johnson, another, another player that's going to bring 100% every night. You, she's going to fight for a lot of balls as the night goes along. We've seen her, uh, one, of the best, one of the best hustlers I think I've seen in Florida basketball this year. You know, right there, she was physical, bumped her girl out of the way, got a chance to at least try to save us an offensive possession. Lady Tigers switch into a 2-3 now. Which, which is not a bad idea considering how well the Lady Cardinals have done in the lane in the second half. Trying to make them shoot some more threes, make them hit those. Yeah, you can hear me say tighten, tighten it up. He's wanting that defense to stay in tight. Uh, I'm sure they're not wanting to leave number three after she's hit a couple, but like some of the girls in the corner, he's not worried about down there. They haven't even shot that shot all night. Yeah. He doesn't want to see somebody flash in that middle of that paint and get the ball in there where they can go to work. Yeah. Good job there from Zoe Wiley forcing the jump ball. And Fort Gibson possession here. Man, another long possession. Very patient, both teams, unbelievably. Yeah, this game has been has gone by very quickly in part because both teams taking their time just looking for the, the right bucket. The Fort Gibson Lady Tigers looking to make this a two-possession game. You know, this number two, Jordan Chancellor, has come off the bench. She hasn't really been a scoring threat, but her defense has been pretty good on Zoe Whiteley. Uh, you know, pressure right there almost caused a turnover. Great nice pass by Mallory Baker. Lady Tigers are going to retain possession. Oh, Ooh, got away with one right there. <laughs> good defense that time by Kylie McGuire. Kind of seeing, seeing what was going to happen and getting into that passing lane. I like where Zoe's trying to get that basketball. You know, Danielle down on the block, but she's got to be open before we make that pass. Yeah. 
Had to be getting close to five seconds there, but we got it in. Lady Cardinals still sticking to that man-to-man. -man. Looks like they're going to stick with that all game. Yeah, I think that's kind of their M.O. Well, Zoe Whiteley had a good look at three just off the mark. In my opinion, that foul right there, we're okay with. But we have one foul as a team. You're going for an offensive rebound. They're not shooting free throws. It's a good place to take a chance. Maybe you still a possession. Yeah. The Lady Cardinals now looking to tie this game up or maybe even take the lead. Yeah, here we are three minutes in the fourth quarter, and either team scored. It's still 24-22, just like it was at the end of the third. I would like to see some more pressure there kind of on that trap. He's telling her, Tider Bailey, he doesn't want her up too high or too wide. He is not worried about them shooting from out there at the G. They just don't want somebody to flash in behind our top guards and just get it in the middle and... You know, we've seen what they can do from there. Just like that. That is not where we want the ball to go. Lexi Borgstock with the jumper there. It was a nice play by them. They set a screen on the uh, Danielle in the middle, so they had her on the seal, and they knew exactly what they were doing. Coach London sees it coming, and he's telling them, tighter, tighter, tighter. They've <laughs> got to pack it in. Errant pass there from Zoe Whiteley. Kind of an uncommon thing to see. Lady Tigers maybe a little bit flustered here in the fourth quarter. Danielle Johnson recovers the loose ball. You know, no no baskets are coming easy for us. Uh, we've had a couple good looks at threes this quarter that just haven't gone. You know, you get one of those to drop it, man, it sure opened things up. Yeah. You like to see maybe Zoe Wiley catch that and then immediately challenge her man. Yeah, you know, Lady Tigers made a little offensive change here. Uh, the post girls popping out around the three-point line and more cutters still looking no surprise lots of patience <laughs> you know what I love about our Lady Tigers is as patient as they are if it's there when you go early we're not saying you can't take that shot you know we might take an early shot if you're open but if it's not we know to be patient yeah which is something that a lot of teams you know don't do when they're when it's a tie ball game in the and three minutes left in the fourth quarter. A lot of teams got to get kind of, you know. They get antsy. Yeah, antsy, yeah. <laughs> yep, and they're firing it up quick, taking bad shots and turnovers. Lady Tigers keeping their composure here in the fourth quarter. We just need a basket. You know, it's been five minutes without a basket. Not open. Good D. We got to call timeout so we don't get a five-second call. So two minutes and 44 seconds left a tie ball game. One of the closest ball games I've seen all year. The Lady Cardinals just putting it on the Lady Tigers as far as defense goes. And you're right, you know, the, their man-to-man -man defense is probably the best we've seen all year. I agree. they very intense at all five positions. Uh, you know, they've been shoving Danielle in the back probably two hands a few times. But in a game like this where it's physical on both ends, you're not going to get that call. Uh, you could tell early on that it was going to be physical. The officials are letting them do it. The girls have to adjust. Both teams and just know it's going to be a physical battle. And I'd like to see maybe a little bit more, you know, off the ball movement when Zoe Whiteley is carrying it, or maybe you know, a little bit more aggressiveness by these other players because they're doing a good job of, of making sure Zoe Whiteley doesn't get past them here in the second half. Yes, it'll be interesting to see too if we go. Uh, Maybe if we go like with a flat look, something where uh, Zoe's coming off the high screen, just letting her attack, trying to get her going downhill. I don't think that's really what we look to do. We look more to run it and get a shot out of our offense. But, you know, maybe if it's late in the ball game, maybe something that we see him try. Yeah. Because if she gets that help, then you're kicking it to one of the London sisters for three. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we come out in. Set that high screen with her from Danielle. The roll's not there. We're trying to post Bailey London up. Now we're kind of back to our normal look, I'd say. Danielle screen for Mallory. Oh, Kinsey got a good move right there. Got hit in the body. A couple big free throws coming up. Kinsey London, a really good free throw shooter. There's been a couple of times when we've seen this year where I see you take some free take some free throws and there is no spin on that ball. It's like a knuckleball going up there. Let me see how the rotation is on this one. You know, she hit some big free throws at the end of the Shrine Tournament in the finals against East Central. 
Uh, she thinks she ended up scoring like eight or nine points at the free throw line in the fourth quarter. You know, those are the shots yeah. that you have to make to win ball games. Like yeah. Late free throws. Kenny London, a really a, usually a really good free throw shooter. Got that one. You know, you'd like to get them both, but take one over none. Got a one-point lead with two minutes and 15 seconds to go. The Lady Tigers in desperate need of a defensive stop here. Oh, nice Bailey. hands by Bailey London. Gets the layup in transition, can't get it. You know, running downhill, that's that's the shot you want. You want her taking that layup, making it. Just Defensive pressure was bearing down there by number 12, Battenfield, and she just wasn't quite able to get it to go. Yeah. There was that length, though, out of our zone. You know, was able to get a deflection and, and a run out. You know, if I'm Lady Tigers, I'm trying really hard to keep the ball out of the middle. Okay, big stop right there. Yeah, notice Kayla Darden had an open open three look, and she didn't take it, so maybe kind of leave her open again, <laughs> maybe see if she takes it a second time. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the biggest threat out there, number three, Kylie McGuire. Yeah. After her, uh, number 12 also, even though she hasn't got a lot of shots, so I think part of that's we know, we know that she's a good player. Bailey London for three. I think that ball either got tipped or hit on the arm. Zoe Wiley. Let's see if they call a tip. It looks like, looks like they won't. He said he didn't see it, the official. Uh, Dustin there, he's a good official, but he, I don't think he saw whether it was tipped or not, so yeah. he wasn't willing to make the call. But I can tell you, Bailey London did not airball that by <laughs> five feet. No. So a minute left. Lady Tigers holding on to a one-point lead. Still sticking to that 2-3 zone now. There's that ball in the middle. Good pass out. And Turner's going to take that shot and hit it. A huge shot by Megan Turner. Exactly what we've talked about. It's Coach London's been yelling up from the sideline all night. Tighter, tighter, tighter. Don't let that ball in the middle because when it gets there, it's one pass and they have a good look. Yeah. Or they're attacking from right there. So now the Lady Tigers are going get to get possession, but then a minute to go under, down by two. You know, if, you're, if you want to get two quick points here and kind of put some more defensive pressure on these Lady Cardinals. I totally agree here. You, you can't be, you know, you stay patient. You want to get a good shot. You know, but you're looking at the ball in your best player's hands early and go score, and then we play defense and see what happens. Yeah. You it don't has been hard to get points, though. we got one point this quarter. That's, yeah, that's true. You don't. You really kind of want to avoid getting bogged down with, you know, having to stop the clock and letting them shoot free throws. That's that's a dangerous game to play when you're down. I agree. And we're a long way from the bonus, so if they were to get a rebound and that's not score, we're going to have to start fouling right away yeah. to even get there. These are the these are that playoff environment game that you want. You know, this is maybe a area finals plan to go to the state tournament. You're down two. It's your ball. What can you do? Good growing moments for a young team. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of these players coming back next year. Yeah, I think Wait. everybody on the floor except for Danielle right now. And, uh, you know. We, we will lose some a few players off the bench, like Hannah Johnson and Kara Milton. Yes. Kara Milton, another really good defensive player. So we ran that set play for Bailey London for three. It wasn't open. Kinsey on the skip. Nice job posting up. Nice pass by Danielle Johnson. <laughs> Mallory, Mallory Baker. Baker gets it to drop. Man, she's been all over the court tonight. Great to see that one go in for 27-27 with 20 seconds to go. Tiger <laughs> crowd getting loud. <laughs> Mallory Baker now has eight points tonight. Lady Cardinals taking their time. 13 seconds left. They may, might be looking for the last shot. I'm thinking they're looking for the last shot. They, they don't want us to get the ball back. we got to keep it out of the middle. Oh, there's their best player, Battenfield, on the kick out. Two seconds left. Don't foul. Don't foul. Great D, Lady Tigers. It's going to overtime. Going to overtime. <laughs> I was glad to see the official stayed consistent there. They have not called weak fouls all night. It wasn't a foul, but it was one where an official could have blown the whistle with yeah. her stepping in through three defenders. What a, what a ball game. <laughs> so we're going to go to overtime. And I I don't know who's going to come out on top with this game. This has been 
One of the closest games all year for the Lady Tigers. You know what? Start of the second half, we come out and score and get, what, an eight-point lead in the third quarter. We're at, like, 22 at that point. We only score five points in about the next 12 minutes. Yeah. But if you're the Lady Tigers, you've also got to be happy you were down two and you haven't been able to score. You get a great look on a pass from Danielle to Mallory Baker. She knocks it down. And then you play good defense. It's like we've said, we're going to play good defense. Mm -hmm. it's, can, we, yeah. can we score enough points to win against this kind of team? Yeah. Yeah, that's one area that the Lady Tigers have never, never really buckled on. Is they've been great defensively all year long. And there have been a few games where – that it's hard to come by points such, such as Victory Christian and today's game and Steelwell and Taco Sequoia, a couple others, but mm -hmm. but the defense has always been there for the Lady Tigers. Yes. And that's kind of been the case with past teams as well. The Lady Tigers kind of pride themselves on having good defense as the years have gone along. Yes, that's, that's why you go to 14 state tournaments in a row is you're playing defense. So here we have four minutes of overtime. It's 27-27. Last time, Battenfield won the jump. We'll see who wins the jump this time. Danielle wins the jump. She wanted that one, you could tell. <laughs> Battenfield doing a good job of staying in front of Zoe Whiteley. And if Danielle is close enough, but look at that help side by number three. Uh, what's, what's her name for them? I've lost it. McGuire, is that right? Yes. Uh, McGuire on that help side, you know, leaving Kinsey because. Not because Kinsey can't hit that shot, but she's able to recover. They're playing such hard defense that they can have backside help and then still get there. You know, uh, a lot of nights on a night like this, let's say Kinsey London's hit two threes and Bailey hits two, and all of a sudden you win by ten, and you're going, yeah, they were a good team, but where you, if you miss a few of those threes and they play this intense D, it gets hard to score. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that the Lady Tigers have kind of struggled with tonight is is taking those three-pointers. They've kind of been off from the three-point arc so far. We've seen a few open looks, a couple from Bailey London, a couple from Zoe Whiteley, but not able to connect so far. And that's gonna that might play a factor here in overtime. If, if either one of these teams can hit a couple of their threes, that, that kind of yeah, so ends the, deal the game. Like, yeah. With the way the defense has been, if you score six or eight points and it's overtime, you're probably going to win. Yeah. You know, here we are. Uh, Lady Tigers are in the middle of a about a 40-second possession and still have the basketball. <laughs> you know, in four minutes, that's uh, going to go fast. You have almost a minute possession each time. <laughs> yeah. Makes each possession that much more valuable. You have to be able to go get a basket. And this might be the least amount of substitutions I've ever seen the Lady Tigers take so far this season. We've talked about they rolled Hannah Johnson and Emma Wofford in so far, but it's really been those seven. I haven't seen... Uh, really, I in all the other games this season, you usually see nine or ten come in, and they've rolled with seven tonight. Yes. You know, like we talked about it's that playoff environment for sure. Uh, I know you got a few days off after this one. I uh, the next game, I believe, is going to be senior night on Tuesday. Maybe that's the home game Wagner, coming up. Yeah. yeah. You know, here you go. Just tough part here about calling timeout. We've, we've done a great job with it, but this intense man, they're not going to let you just easily throw the ball in. They're going to make you work. Good job here. Let us go to the backcourt. So. There's that screen and attack. Danielle's got to go rebound. Zoe Wiley. That's what we talked about early. You know, get that ball in your best one-on-one -on -one player hands. You know, because she's, she's the fastest that can attack so well. Set that screen for her. And it's important if she were to have missed that, Danielle has got to dive down and get that rebound. Yeah. And she was. She was diving there. Lady Tiger sticking with that 2-3. It's worked out for them so far in the second half. And I don't know if you heard them. High post. We <laughs> do not want it to go to the high post. And they got it there. Battenfield's going to take the three. Can't get it to hit. Bailey running. Huge rebound right there. She went up and got that one. Using some of that length. Bailey London, six feet tall. The really long wingspan. You know, things that people take for granted about our Lady Tigers is, is our size and our length. It's easy to just look at us and think, oh, you know, they look like a good team, but we've got a lot more parts than people realize. Yeah. Trying to run maybe that same play one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, she had Kinsey open, and it hit the net. That's going to go to the Lady Cardinals. Huge break there. 
for the Lady Cardinals. You can tell what we're trying to get Zoe running downhill off that screen. We'll probably run that again. Yeah, yeah. They were they successfully ran it off the inbounds the first time. How, how great a player is Zoe Whiteley? You know, she's she's not selfish. She's looking for someone else there. You know, she'll take the layup, but if not, she was looking for a teammate who was open. It just kind of a bad break. You know, got to know where you are. Good D, straight up. Danielle, Danielle Johnson, Johnson, nice hands. Big stop for the Lady Tigers. Two minutes to go. You know, uh, you can tell uh, Battenfield's getting a little dead leg right there. She's reaching instead of playing the D that she was playing earlier. Zoe, I think, can maybe get by her again. She is long, though, six foot tall. Oh, there's that switch. Maybe looking for Danielle down low. Didn't get it. Kenzie London open in the corner. Can she hit it? No, so. Bailey but, London with a huge offensive rebound. Lady Tigers going to retain possession. Maybe run some more clock off. Looking to make this a two-possession game. They do that. That is oh, huge. Oh, we got a lucky break right there. They had to be well defended in that pass. Wasn't supposed to get there. <laughs> Instead, uh, Danielle, though, good hustle play. You know, it takes a little luck, but a little hustle, too. You got to go down there and get it. Now we're shooting two free throws. Danielle Johnson with two huge free throws here. If she can hit the first. You know, we talked about the Energizer Bunning, Zoe Whiteley, number one. I, looking a little winded. You know, this has been an intense basketball game. Win overtime, and she hasn't been out, I think, a single second tonight. No, and she's been running a lot. She's been doing most of the ball, the ball handling here for the Lady Tigers. Well, she missed the second, but got the first. We're up three points with a minute 20 to go. You cannot let them go inside. You have to make them shoot at from the outside this time. You know, they try to screen your zone. Uh, they'll, they'll try and screen Danielle if we let them run enough patience here. And they oh. are going to take a three, but they're going to be off. Yeah, That's going to be Lady Tigers' ball. So great, great piece of officiating here. Their coach is begging for a foul call that was not <laughs> there. You know, we just played good defense, and she fell down. So great defensive stop there for the Lady Tigers. Good job, Mallory Baker breaking the press. Bailey London had the open three, passed it up. Maybe looking to uh, take some more clock off. Big play here that that ball was tipped. I'm not sure if Zoe knew it was tipped the way that she went after it, but got there. and uh, One and one now. It is one and one. Yes. Zoe Whiteley has a chance to go to the line and put this thing away. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if you make two, as good as our defense has been, we haven't given up a point yet in overtime. Yeah, yeah. And this, this is a, it comes down to this a lot. When it, if you can hit your free throws, there's a good chance you're going to win the game. You know, the other night I heard Hayden Hackworth talking, and he's so spot on. Front end of a one-on-one -on -one is such a big free throw. Because when you miss it, loss of possession there, ball. If you make it, you get a whole other shot. Yeah. You know, uh, it's okay here if you're Lady Tigers. You'd love to make that. Had a chance to kind of put it away. But three-point ball game, 46 seconds. If I'm them, I'm probably looking early inside in the middle. Yeah, uh, they've had success from there all night. Yes, and the three that I'd want if I were them would be after it went to the inside to kick it back out. Yeah. Look for that Kylie McGuire three-pointer. She has been she has eight tonight. She's been hitting all, all night. Mm -hmm. You know, we've done a better job, or, or she's missed a few, but early on she hit those early, and she's kind of slowed down since then. That's true. That's true. And there's that lane look, but Danielle Johnson with great defense. That's kind of the benefit of running that 2-3 zone. You're clogging up those lanes. It's going to be really hard to score past Danielle with her hands up. Yeah, she her presence in there is huge. You know, she's she's had a great game, even though maybe she hasn't scored a lot of points tonight. Just like that, straight up, D, and it's going to bother you. You're not going to get that foul call just because you threw it in there and you, you threw your body around. Time out here by the Lady Tigers. Well, he's going to let it go. Danielle Johnson with the chance. She get, does get a foul. Great look up there. Was it, is that Mallory Baker that made that pass from yes. the half line? Yes. I'm telling you, her stat sheet is not going to give her credit other than the rebound area of what all she's done tonight. But Danielle Johnson with another opportunity to put this game away. She does hit the first free throw. That is a huge shot with 13.5 seconds left. And that all but puts it away. Uh, you know, they'll have a timeout if they were to score quick, but, man, the way our defense has been, if we can keep them scoring fast, I like where we're at. 
And Lady Tigers so far with a lot of success against that full court press all game long. And they showed it there again in overtime. Yeah, you know, it, the pressuring is not what bothers us as much as if you can play a really intense man-to-man. -man. Because if you leave and double, our ladies are too good. We're yeah. going to make that pass, and we're going to have numbers on you. Yeah, like Mallory Baker just demonstrated right there. But it was kind of kind of a risky situation as Zoe Wiley picks up her dribble before she crosses half court. And you think, well, maybe maybe they do get a steal here. But Wiley doing a good job of finding the open man, not letting them force that turnover. Yeah, she made a great pass. And, you know, you see there, you know, Coach London's over here. He's got two timeouts left. He's thinking, do I call timeout? Do I not? Trying to read the play, see if somebody's open. Uh, <laughs> you see that a lot at the end of a close high school basketball game. Yeah. At all levels because the coach is saying, do I use that timeout or not? Here we are, our starting five on the floor as they've been the majority of the night. We've said Hannah Johnson and uh, Emma Walford have had some big moments tonight. Danielle Johnson shooting her second free throw. 13.5 seconds left to go. List is short. Look at Mallory Baker, the hustle player, getting us another possession. She's been doing it all night. She did it again here. I bet she's got close to 10 offensive rebounds. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I said that Zoe Whiteley was my MVP of the first half. I'm going to not call Mallory Baker my MVP, but I'm going to give her my hustle award. Yeah. She, she's been all over the place all night long. No doubt about that. Misses it. Gets her gets own her rebound. rebound. Oh, and she, she wanted the end one. I like it. I think she – that was close. Unbelievable. Give her another offensive rebound. <laughs> and this time she's got two shots. Mallory Baker. And you talk about, you know, that's kind of the inside presence that Daniel Johnson has too is she's going to do a lot of the boxing out and she's going to leave some of, those, some of those rebounds open for Baker to come in, kind of swoop in and get. That's a great point. You're absolutely right because they're all thinking we got to keep Danielle off the boards, and here comes Mallory with her hustle to go get us an extra possession. <laughs> she hits both free throws. So that puts the Lady Tigers up by six. Lady Cardinals looking for two quick threes. They're going to waste too much time off the clock and just get one last shot off. Battlefield is going to hit that layup, but that's going to be the end of the game. The Lady Tigers win 33-29. to A really competitive game there for the Lady Tigers. A lot of defense, really good man-to-man -man like you talked about from the Lady Cardinals, and really good defense from the Fort Gibson Lady Tigers as well, running that 2-3 and doing a really good job with that. And so that's going to conclude the game. The Lady Tigers come out with a win. Yeah, very fun to watch, man. Our Lady Tigers, that was one of those moments we said, this is playoff basketball. Can we come through and win? We're down two with less than a minute to go. And we got up with a four-point win that was pretty much a six-point win because they scored their last basket yeah. with no time when our defense didn't matter. Great ball game. And I think it's two teams that could be in the state tournament. You know, the very oh, yeah. Lady Cardinals are, are a good basketball team. I know they're not in our class, but you wouldn't want to see them. That's, that's for sure there. So we're going to start the boys game. We'll be back shortly. This is for Gibson Tigers.tv, and we'll see you then. <laughs>